Hello and welcome to Get Weld Soon, a Go Engineer presentation. This will be a look at the new weldment features for SOLIDWORKS 2021, a brief recap of SOLIDWORKS 2019 and SOLIDWORKS 2020 weldment enhancements, and then some refresh how-to on cut lists and weldment profiles. I'm Tim Strange, and now let's turn to my colleague Ben Potter to go over structural systems. Hello. Today we will be talking about structure system added into SOLIDWORKS 2019. Opening our part, which contains sketches and planes for reference, we'll open the Structure System tab. Once we click on Structure System, we'll enter its environment, similar to a sketch environment. Clicking on Primary Members, we can then access four different parameters, Path Segment, Reference Plane, Point and Length, and On Face. We'll cover most of these in this video. Moving over the Profile tab, we're going to use square tubing 40 by 40 by 4. Back to the Members tab, Path Segment is like Weldments, but allows us to select any number of sketch segments regardless of their orientation with each other, which is one of the advantages of Structure System. In this case, we'll start by selecting all the vertical lines and then all the horizontal ones. This allows us to maintain better control over how the segments are oriented from the start. Once we finish selecting all of our edges, we'll go ahead and click OK for the first primary member section. Now we'll look at secondary members. Within Structure System, secondary members allow us to use the primary members as references. Selecting the chain option, we can then select all of the vertical segments in a snaking pattern, which will chain all of the secondary members between them. Once we've finished this, we need to select the planes in which the secondary members will be intersecting. Once we select these planes, we'll see a preview appear, and we can go ahead and click OK. And there we have our secondary members. We'll now add more primary members using the on face capability. For this, we'll need to show our two surface bodies, then change the profile to side plate using 150 by 3. Now we need our planes. Selecting the planes that will intersect with our face gives us our steps. As we select these, we'll see the preview appear for each step as we select all of them. Now we'll move back to the Profile tab so that we can change the orientation by 90 degrees. Then click OK. Now repeat that process for the top steps. Again, selecting the face and then moving into the Planes box and select the planes that intersect with this face. The profile will be remembered from the last time. All we need to do is change its orientation by 90 degrees, and then we can rehide the surface bodies and click OK. When Structure Systems first came out, the point to length was as simple as creating a member starting with a point and defining a direction and length. We'll show this by using point to length and selecting our four outer points, then a direction by selecting a vertical line, and finally setting our height at 1700 millimeters. Our profile needs to be changed, so we'll go over to the Profile tab, change it to Structural Beam, and we'll use the 120 by 12. Click OK once the profile has been updated. Now, in SOLIDWORKS 2020, they added more capabilities for the point to length, such as up to point. Here we'll select our starting point and then select an end point, which will use the midpoint of our horizontal beam. Clicking OK once done. Also added in SOLIDWORKS 2020 was the capability of up to plane. Here we'll select the last four points that will support the upper platform. Once selected, we select a plane to have them extend up to. Now we'll go ahead and change our profile back to square tubing and the 40 by 40 by 4, as a few sketch segments were missed in the beginning. This shows how easy it is to add members in at any time. Selecting these, we'll go ahead and click OK. So now that we have all of this, we can zoom in and see that we have an issue. This overlapping is due to multiple planes intersecting the same segment. Once we remove the duplicates, we need to correct the orientation. 
New in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we have the option within the Profile tab to use the Graphics area to rotate or move our profiles. Rotating our profile, we can see that we need to rotate about 45 degrees to get the correct orientation. We can either get this close using the Graphics area, or we can use that information to make it exact in the Profile Alignment box. We'll click OK, and now that has been fixed. We'll go ahead and accept everything by exiting out of the Structure System environment, which will then open the Corner Treatment. SOLIDWORKS will look at all the corners, whether they're simple corners, two member corners, or complex corners. For the most part, the software will calculate the best way to complete the corners, as we see here. But sometimes we may need to specify how we want certain corners to do this, we simply click on the dot to access a specific corner. We can then reorder the trim of the segments until we reach something that we deem acceptable. We'll do this for this corner, and we'll look at the opposite side, moving them around until we find an iteration that we're happy with. Typically, we would go through all the corners to make sure they're all fine. In this case, we'll click OK and look at the completed structure system. In the feature tree, all we're left with is two folders, one for the structure system and one for the corner treatment. We can easily right-click and edit these features to add or change anything within them. I can see that one of the secondary members is incorrect, as it would block the exit at the top of the platform. So we'll go ahead and edit the structure system. To fix this, simply click on the member and delete it. Once more, exit structure system. Now being up in this area, I can see that one corner of the upper platform has come to a mitered or sharp point, and it's not what we want. We can correct this by editing the corner management and changing this corner. So even if we miss a corner or need to change it later, we can always come in and re-edit them after the fact if new changes come down the pipeline. This corner is not a simple or complex. It is a two-member, so clicking on the two-member section and then the dot, we can move through the different options until we have the diagonal member butting into the vertical. Accept the change by clicking OK. This has been a quick overview of Structure System from SOLIDWORKS 2019, 2020, and 2021. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Those structural systems are so quick and powerful. Now let's look at the core weldment enhancements. SOLIDWORKS 2021 has enhanced abilities to create weldment structures and modify them. Let's look at the way the tubes come together on our cart. The vertical tube is 3x2 rectangular tubing, while the horizontal tube is 2x2. The Trim Extend feature is used to trim the tubes and has several options for the corner type. End Butt Trims determine how one tube trims the other. Miter Trim bisects the angle, creating an equal angle. But our tubes are not the same size, so this doesn't quite work. SOLIDWORKS 2021 now allows the user to use Flush Miter, which trims the tubes to be flush. This looks much better. Cut list properties are also updated for 2021. We have a plate used four times, and we'd like to know the total length. SOLIDWORKS 2021 allows equations in the cut list. We'll set this as an equation, and use quantity times the plate length. Now that's easy to see just how much material we need. SOLIDWORKS 2020 introduced two cutlass properties that are available for structural members created by Weldment as well as structure system features. The angle direction property indicates whether the two end faces of the body are along the same direction or not. You can specify same, opposite, out of plane, or none. The angle twist property indicates the angle between the normals of two end cut planes for out of plane trimming. You can set the angle between 0 and 180 degrees. SOLIDWORKS 2019 added the ability to configure cutlass properties.
This makes setting up custom properties even easier. We can also have cut list IDs generated automatically based on what cut list properties we choose. You can see the options here that are preset. Now we've gone through some of the enhancements, let's look at a few of the other items of interest. We'll start with what you might use weldments for. For the usual application, it's parts that would typically be welded together. Framework is a very typical use. We have a few examples of steel structures, of tubes, and even pipes. We can, however, go deeper and use materials such as wood. For example, a picnic table would be a great use of wood profiles in a weldment. Weldments work much like a sweep where we have a path, usually a series of 2D or 3D sketches. We then use those in combination with profiles to create the members. Now let's look at creating and managing weldment profiles. SolidWorks has many profiles already created. You will just need to download them. To do so, go to the design library on the task pane. Find and expand SolidWorks content. Click on weldments and you'll see the available choices. Download the zip files and extract. Once they're downloaded and extracted, you'll need to either place them in the default folder, which is C, Program Files, SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks, Lang, English, Weldment Profiles, or add the new location in your file location settings for Weldment Profiles. One thing to look for when you add the files to your folder is to make sure you have your structure set up properly. As you can see here, normal profiles are two folders deep. You have a standards folder, then a type folder, then your files. When you start a new sketch and use structural member, you can see the same structure as we set up. The standards folder, then the type, then the actual profiles. If you don't have them set up properly, you won't get the profiles to be selectable. You can modify existing profiles to make small changes, or save as and make whatever changes you want to create a new profile. All SolidWorks profiles are saved as an SLD FLP file. If you choose to create a profile, if you choose to create a profile from scratch, make sure that when you save, you have pre-selected the sketch. Your profile should only be one sketch, and then do a save as. Choose SLD FLP and make sure you save in the folder that SOLIDWORKS is looking for in the weldment profiles. I already have one set up as a quick access folder, so I don't have to keep browsing for it. Another way to handle size changes is use configured weldment profiles. As you can see, the folder structure is slightly different in so much as you don't have to have a type folder. The file itself acts as the type, then the configuration acts as the size. This folder has only one profile. Once opened, you can see the profile has three configurations, and those are all selectable for the size when using weldments. This gives you the freedom to use configurations or not, then also add or remove sizes based on company standards. Now let's look at cut list properties. Cut list properties are where we store properties for individual members of weldments. Much like each document has custom properties, Get to the properties by right-clicking any of the groups in the cut list and choosing properties. You can also rename cut list items to be more descriptive. You can see the names for the frame file have already been changed to mean more to the user. Renaming these is the same as renaming any feature in SOLIDWORKS. Once the properties are open, you can click on any of the groups to see the properties. Some of the properties are already here, but you can add more. The list of properties is customizable, or you can just type in a new property. We have three tabs here as well. The cut list summary, property summary, and then the cut list table. The cut list table is what you would see in the drawing as your bill of materials. This is good to know so you can make any edits or additions before you even start a drawing. Should you want to add to the list of cut list properties for future use, Open the document in the Location Lister for File Locations.
Once you open the file, you can add any properties you'd like to see for future use.